Hello friends, welcome back to my channel Vital Induction. Friends, quite often as an anesthetist, you have been asked to lessen the CVP for the motive of minimizing intraoperative blood loss. In this video today, I will tell you how to do that. And if you watch this video till the end, I am sure you will assimilate yourself with all the concepts and knowledge to effectively lower the CVP. Friends, throughout this video, I will also be telling you about the common techniques, medicines and their dosages required to shrink the CVP. Friends, central venous pressure is the fluid pressure in the vena cava near the right atrium. It is measured in millimeter of mercury and centimeter of water. For a spontaneously breathing patient, the normal CVP ranges from 3 to 8 millimeter of mercury. Friends, you should always look for contraindication for CVP reduction before starting this procedure. For example, if the patient is having heart failure, in those conditions, you don't decrease the CVP. The important seven monitorings, which is required over and above the standard monitoring practices, which we usually do for any surgical cases. These are continuous arterial blood pressure monitoring, continuous central venous pressure monitoring, hourly urine output monitoring, hourly ABG monitoring, pulse pressure volume monitoring, and clinically you should see the surgical field. You should assess the blood loss and you should keenly observe for any sudden fall in central venous pressure, which may be due to compression of vessels in the surgical field. So friends, without wasting any further time, let's get started. So the number one principle is reduction of preload. Preload can be decreased by restricting IV fluids. Number two is citing a neurexial block, which decreases venous pressure, ultimately decreases venous return. Third is position of the patient. Reverse Trendelenburg position helps to reduce venous return. Number four is partial obliteration of the IVC. On these four methods, restriction of IV fluids, positioning of the patient is the most widely used technique. Now coming to second principle, the principle of venodilatation. Venodilatation can be achieved by venodilators. Commonly used drug in this category is glycerol trinitrate. The dosage which is used for reducing CVP is 5 to 15 microgram per kg per minute. You have to titrate the dosage of GTN as per the requirement. The third principle, the principle of volume contraction or reduction of blood volume. Friends, autologous blood donation or autologous blood donation is one of the techniques where the blood is donated by the patient preoperatively and that can be used for the patient during or after the surgery. The blood contraction which happens reduces CVP. The other method which is used are use of mannitol and third use of lasix. Here the dose of mannitol is 0.5 gram per kg and lasix you can use 10 to 20 milligram. Friends, between any two different methods which we use to decrease the CVP, we should give some time for the method to act. We must give some time to the patient. Different patient has different response. For some patient, only positioning and fluid restriction might help. But in other cases, you might have to use glycerol trinitrate along with mannitol and lasix. Now coming to the fourth concept, increasing stroke volume. Friends, we know that patient who suffer from heart failure has high CVP. So in normal patient, when we increase the stroke volume with low dose or intermittent dose of noradrenaline, it might help to reduce the CVP. The fifth point is by reducing airway pressure. Friends, reduction of PEEP and respiratory rate both helps to reduce the airway pressure. Reduction of airway pressure causes reduction in CVP. 
Friends, before concluding this video, I want to brief you about the harmful effects of reducing CGP for long. Friends, reduction of CGP causes reduction in perfusion of many organs. Friends, reduction in CGP helps to reduce blood loss during the surgery, particularly liver resection. But it comes with a price, and the price is hypoperfusion. Low CGP for a very long time might cause hypoperfusion and rise in lactic acidosis. There must be continuous balance maintained between the risk and the reward associated with this lowering of CVT. Friends, the value of this procedure lies on the speed at which you can correct the acid-base imbalances which might occur during this CVT reduction. Friends, if you find this video useful to you, if it was a value for your time, then please press the like button. If you are new on my channel, then please subscribe it. I regularly post such kind of interesting and useful contents. So friends, that's all in this video. Meet you in my next video. Till then, bye.